Let's talk about the pentatonic minor scale. We're going to do pattern one. Now I just want to tell you right off the bat that if you've taken my Amazing Guitar Secrets course, I'm teaching this differently than I did in that course. I think that the way I'm teaching it now is a little easier to understand and so if the terminology that I'm using is a little bit different than what I used in the other course, you'll understand why. Okay, so F sharp I'm going to do this in F sharp minor, and the reason I've chosen F sharp minor is because it's the relative minor of A, and I wanted to be able to show you these different patterns going up the fretboard without having to rearrange them, so to speak. So in other words, if I started up here, let's say, on C, and this was position 1, by the time I got to position 5, I'd have to go back down here which I think might be a little confusing. So I'm going to just do these in F sharp minor and go straight up the fretboard and show you the different patterns. Key concept to, to understand. F sharp minor sounds like this. This is pattern one, F sharp minor. Now if I play it in one octave, it sounds like this. But if I go on up to complete the pattern, it's going to sound like this. Okay, so we're zoomed up right on the fretboard now, and I'm going to play that pattern for you. This is pentatonic, F sharp, pentatonic minor, first position. Now I'm going to play for you the second pattern of the pentatonic minor scale and it just happens to start on A because I'm in F sharp pentatonic minor. Now keep in mind these are the exact same notes as the first pattern that I gave you. But you're just going to start on, this, on the second note of that scale, which is A. And here we go. Now I'm going to give you the third pattern, F sharp pentatonic minor, and we're going to be starting on B because B is the third note. One, two, three. So we're up here on B, and this is the f this is the third pattern, F sharp pentatonic minor. play that the way that I am now, fingering it the way I am, starting with your second finger here. Or you could do it this way. But if you do it that way, you're going to have to move your hand back. You have to move a little bit more than if you just play it with your middle finger. Okay, that was F sharp. Pentatonic minor, third position, and we're going to do the fourth position coming up next. Now we're on the fourth position, F sharp pentatonic minor, which is C sharp. 
So we're going to start right here on C sharp. I'm going to play it up for you. So that's your fourth position. Fifth position is coming up next. Okay, this is F sharp pentatonic minor, fifth position on E. Let's talk more about that F sharp pentatonic minor there. Now I've given you positions one through five. Now let me just to reiterate, position number one is simply uh, where you're starting on the root note. Then if you just if you don't start on the root note and you start on the next note up the scale, which is here. Okay, it's the exact same scale, you're just starting on a different note. If you go on up that scale, if on this B, instead of starting here and playing it up, you play it here, you get the third position, and so on and so forth. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now is connecting positions from one to the next. And the first one I'm going to show you is connecting position one and position two. So I'm going to play position one for you. Play position two for you. Now I'm going to connect the two. So how easy that was? So you just go up slide and then back down. I'll play it slowly for you. Okay. So that just gives you one example of how you connect those two patterns. So let's say that you were an F sharp um, that your chord progression had an F sharp dominant, went to a B, C sharp, B, F sharp. Let's say that was your chord pattern. Well, guess what? If you're in F sharp, you can use any of those notes that are in that F sharp pentatonic. You might do something like this. Okay, I used all the notes from that first position. You could also use any notes from the second position. Notice I went from the second position back to the first. You could also use any from the third, the fourth, or the fifth as well. But let's just stick with the first and second right now. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about tying these positions together. Okay. And I've written several exercises we're going to get to here in just a second that's going to show you how to tie those together. I'm just giving you an overview right now. The same thing holds true for the second and the third positions and we'll do that next.